Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be looking at the Vision 5.2. That's a single board computer, GPIO, pins, Ethernet, USB, all the normal stuff. But it hasn't got an ARM processor at the center. It's got a RISC-V processor. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So obviously the most popular single board computer in the world is the Raspberry Pi. We've had different models over the years. It's increased in performance. It's increased in the kind of amount of RAM that you can get uh, and the functionality. And so here we are now in 2023 and single board computers got the Raspberry Pi, you've got lots of clones, lots of other ones that uh, try to do the same thing, try to do it better in some cases. Uh, but really they've all been based on the ARM uh, ecosystem, so with 64-bit ARM uh, processors in them. Now we have a single board computer that uses the RISC-V ecosystem, so that's an open source instruction set, although the chip itself isn't open source, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Now, I sometimes don't quite see the point of RISC-V, or I certainly don't have the same enthusiasm as some people. So to try to uh, kind of balance my view of the Vision 5.2, I've brought along Gary, the RISC-V fan, to talk to us about uh, this particular device. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me on here on this video. Now, first of all, you've got to remember that RISC-V is an exciting brand new frontier. For too many years, we've had only x86 with just a couple of manufacturers. We've had ARM that dominates completely in the mobile sector and is now moving up into, you know, Apple uh, laptops. We've got it in the server. It's dominating everything. Now it's time for some fresh competition, and that fresh competition is certainly coming from RISC-V. Now, of course, RISC-V isn't as mature as other ecosystems systems, but this really is exciting to show what is possible over the next five to ten years. And exciting to see boards like this coming out where we can actually get our hands on RISC-V and do something actually with it. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the board. Okay, so let's do a quick tour of the board. Along the back are all the ports. Uh, and so starting on the left here, we have uh, an audio jack. Then we have four USB ports. I'll come back to those in a moment. HDMI, two Ethernet ports, because I bought a super early bird version, one is uh, gigabit Ethernet and the other is 100 uh, bit Ethernet. Uh, on the final ones, it's both of them are uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet. Now, talking about these ports, you can see here they're all blue. Now, on the original description that was given on the uh, Kickstarter, this is two of them are USB uh, 2.0 and two of them are USB 3.0, but they're all colored blue as if they were all 3.0 and then when you look at the current documentation it says they're all 3.0 but still on the website it says that two of them are two and two of them are three and this is really kind of indicative of the status of this board lots of confusion do i have how many ports do i have are they what are they you know and but we'll talk more about that later but anyway so there you got usb hdmi and uh, ethernet yes gary you bought the super early bird version now, spinning it round to the other side, here we have USB-C uh, for power, and it can be powered by a whole range of different USB-C, uh, including power delivery modules. So that seems to be quite versatile. I plug mine into a power delivery a uh, power supply, and it seems to work absolutely great. Here you've got a reset button. In between these two, there is a power light and a green activity light. That's very important because if you are struggling to get it to boot, and again, I'll talk more about that later, then checking to see whether you've got the green activity light really does help to know whether the board is actually doing anything or not, whether it's actually kind of, you know, progressing along in the boot process. And here we have 40 uh, GPIO pins. So looking down the sides, here we have a fan connector, and this is a camera connector, MIPI CSI camera connector. And these two here on the right hand side are MIPI uh, display serial interfaces. And then flipping the board over, we can see there are some storage options. You've got a uh, micro SD card, which is how you boot the device. Uh, at the moment, that seems to be about the only real way you can actually boot up Linux on it. You've got a socket there for eMMC and you've got an M2 M key connector, which if I understand it right, only supports uh, the NVMe type of SSD uh, M cards. I've also just brought the board a bit closer because I want to point out here these dip switches. Here it tells you that it can boot from flash, SD, EMMC and UART. 
And the thing to note is you should basically leave them in that position. That seems to be what you need at the moment. The rest of these workflows, these boot flows, haven't really been worked out yet. But the thing to note is that on the thing here, it says ON, on, and you might believe to think that these two switches to the right actually mean on, where, which in this case would mean it's UART. In fact, they don't. There's actually L there for low and H there for high. So in fact, this is zero, zero, which is flash. Okay, so that's just, just a note that confused me for a while when I was trying to boot out uh, different, uh, different, you know, work out different ways of booting it. Uh, that isn't on. It's low uh, and it's high. Yes, it's the early bird version. And also while I've got the board here, it's worth looking at the star of the show as it were. Sorry for the pun. This is the star five. So this is the JH7110 RISC-V processor. That's a quad core uh, processor running at 1.5 gigahertz and it supports the 64-bit uh, RISC-V GC uh, implementation. If you want to know more about the different way you name Risk Five, then do check out my Risk Five uh, videos that I have here on this channel. And it's accompanied by a single core Imagination BXE four thirty two a GPU. Now, if you've heard of Imagination before, that's Power VR. It's really what you used to find in the iPhones, and what the iPhones are kind of using today. It's a deferred. A renderer GPU and Imagination and Apple have some cross licensing agreements. But Imagination recently moved into designing its own RISC V processors, and so now it's able to offer RISC V processors and its GPUs to kind of give a full solution. This isn't a, a RISC V, this isn't an Imagination RISC V, this is a RISC V uh, processor from Sci Fi. And the point about this is, and this is very important for people to understand, is that Star 5 are licensing the CPU core from Sci-5. Okay, it isn't open source, it isn't free, it isn't just out there on the internet. They Sci-5 design CPU cores and then they license them to companies that want to include them in their hardware. So Star-5 have licensed both the CPU and the GPU from different companies, Sci-5 and Imagination uh, in this particular instance. Now it is just worth mentioning about the price. As you can see here on the screen, the prices are comparable with the Raspberry Pi 4 and there's not dramatic uh, differences. Now, why am I pointing that out? And that's because even under my last video that mentioned Risk Five, people were like, but surely it'll be cheaper if it's Risk Five, because people have some kind of confused idea that because they're not paying a license fee to ARM or you know a license fee to somebody, then therefore everything's gonna be cheaper. Of course, it's the manufacturing costs building that printed circuit board, making that chip, you know, the RAM, all the connectors, all that stuff is what costs the money. And the few tiny, tiny bit that would have been uh, something to do with a license fee is insignificant compared to the other manufacturing costs. Of course, you're not gonna see things that are much, much cheaper. So people kind of get it wrong in their thinking. They think that, uh, you know, if there's no license fee, then, oh, that was like 90% of the cost. No, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost and it, it doesn't really make any difference to the overall uh, price that we get. Just like to remind you, you can follow me on Twitter and other social media sites. All the handles are here on the screen. And don't forget, I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to garrickspace.com, type in your mail address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, let's look at some of the performance numbers. Okay, so the CPU core inside of the Star 5 processor is a 64-bit RISC-V application core. And here you can see the various details. It's from Sci-5. There are four of these. It's a quad core clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So Sci-5 designed the cores and then they've licensed it to uh, Star 5 who have then gone ahead and built this uh, processor as I was saying. So what is the performance like? Well, Sci-5 actually compared this, the U74, to the Cortex-A55, maybe the A Cortex-53. Now, I must say that when I did my running of this board, it did feel slow. So I thought it would be important to do some proper benchmarking. So the first benchmark here is using my thread test tool. The code is available in my GitHub repository. The results are in seconds, so the quicker it completes the test, the better. And so we've got single thread and multi-thread, and I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3, which has got the Cortex A53, the Raspberry Pi 4, the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, which you find in Project Volterra, and then the Vision 5 board. So looking at single thread, as you can see here, the Raspberry Pi 3 is significantly faster 
So this is at what, about one second? This is almost three seconds for the Vision 5. And then of course the Pi 4 is even quicker and the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 3 even quicker. So single threaded performance on the Vision 5 seems to be pretty poor compared to even a Raspberry Pi 3, according to my uh, testing. And then if you go to multi-thread, so this is running 16 threads. So obviously some of these processors like the Snapdragon have more threads than that. There are quad core on the Pi 3, the Pi 4 and the Vision 5. We can see here just under eight seconds on the Raspberry Pi 3, but just under 12 seconds on the Vision 5 uh, 2. And then was it about three seconds on the Pi 4, about one second on the Snapdragon. So a huge difference you know, between 16, you know, 12 seconds and uh, one second or eight, you know, it's just the the testing does, shows that it's just not not that fast. It's not as fast as they are are claiming. So then I thought, hold on, let me don't just use your test tool, Gary. Try something else. So, for example, Open uh, SSL has a benchmark to create hashes and it measures how many hashes it can make in a certain amount of time. So the more hashes it makes, the better. So let's just look at the first result here. Raspberry Pi 3 is in blue. You know, it's making way, way more hashes, in fact, than the Vision 5. In fact, 500% more when they're 16K hashes. This is for uh, SHH256. And when you go down here to 8K size and 16, I mean, it's like 700% greater performance. Look at this. This all the way up to here. I mean, so... The benchmarks show it. When I was using it, I show it. Just the performance is just not there for the Vision 5 II in any way whatsoever. Okay, let's have a look at those GPIO pins. Okay, so here on the left, we have a picture of the Star 5 uh, Vision 5 II board. As you can see, there are these 40 GPIO pins. Here is a diagram showing what those pins do. Now, basically, it follows exactly the same format as the Raspberry Pi in that you get five volts, five volts ground, then some pins, then more ground pins, 3.3 volts over here. And so the spacing of where the, the power rails are, where the grounds are, is exactly the same. However, the pins have different names. So if you are programming, let's say in Python, and you want to take it from a Raspberry Pi over to here, then you're gonna make sure you get the names right. Now what I'm gonna do is show you a very quick demo. There is a, a Python library you can use which will show you in a minute. I'll show you the code in a minute. And basically, if we put in a breadboard here, very simple, just an LED and of course a resistor. And this is the positive side of the resistor. Here's the circuit, this needs to come to ground. So what do you do? You connect, in this case, I've chosen pin 22. That's this one over here, which is called GPO50, but in the Python code, we refer to it as 22. So pin 22 needs to get connected up to the positive side of that LED. Then we need to connect it to ground. I could connect to any of these ground pins. I've just used the one next to it there. So that ground pin there, pin 20, is the ground. Once you've got that wired up, you can write a Python program and get the LED flashing. Okay, and here is the Python program itself. First of all, you import the Vision 5 GPO library and there are instructions in the Vision 5 quick startup guide on how you can install that using pip, which is a fairly normal way of installing things. If you're familiar with Python, you'll understand what that is. We need to import time because we're gonna do a delay. What do we do? We define which pin it is, noted 22, not GPO 50, 22. We say that GPO 22 is an output, because obviously we're flashing the LED. Then we've got a loop here, while true, set the I output to high, sleep for a third of a second, set the output to low, sleep to a third of a second, go around the loop. So literally on off, on off with a third of a second delay between each state, simple as that. Here's a quick demo. Okay, let's have a look at some of the problems I've had. Now the first problem was, is that the board I got, and I agree, I did get an early development version, the super early bird version, didn't have the latest firmware on it. And when I tried to install the latest version of Debian, then it didn't work. It wouldn't even boot, nothing on the screen. Uh, it was a real head scratching moment. I digged around in the forums, did a bit of research, found that I had to upgrade the firmware. And the way you do that is you copy on some files. Now, I went back to a previous version that they had released, which works with that one, but that one, you couldn't get any networking to work. So I couldn't copy the files over. I couldn't install the flash tool that needed to be installed. Then after more research, I found that there is a 
minimal SD card image that they give you that you can boot from that. It's kind of got everything you need on it. You plug in the new firmware on a USB drive, you mount it and then you flash it. Finally did all that and actually managed to get the latest version running with the new uh, firmware. But then once that was up and running, I couldn't get it to work on very many monitors. I tried it on my, I've got a trusty Dell monitor that works on basically everything. It did boot up on that, but it only came up in 640 by 480. I then tried it on my 4K TV, absolutely nothing whatsoever. I then tried it on my portable HDMI monitor, the one that I've got a video of here uh, in this channel, there'll be a link in the description, and that finally was able to bring up uh, full HD. So, you know, if you're, if you're just a, someone who just wants to plug something in and get it working like you would do with a Raspberry Pi, Certainly at the moment, you're going to have to do some extra work and some extra reading and some extra research to actually get the thing to even boot up. Come on, this is bleeding edge. Of course, there's going to be a few bumps in the road. OK, so before I give you my conclusion, let's hear what Gary has to say. So for me, the really exciting thing is to see a full Linux desktop and not some odd kind of distribution, you know, specifically this is actually, you know, Debian, so it's there, it's ready for, you know, everyone knows what Debian is, you how to use it, there's all the stuff's there, you've got a desktop, you've got LibreOffice, you've got Firefox, and this is all on a brand new computer architecture that is not 8x86, it's not ARM, this is RISC-V, and you can see it works, it's here, it's up and running, you can click, you can do, you can use, you can connect, it's all here. Now, yes, there are some things that need to be worked out. Yes, there are some bugs in the software. Yes, it's going to need some maturity, but this is so exciting. Okay, so first of all, let me say it is interesting to have this board. It certainly is pushing the boundary of what you can do with RISC-V. And if you are a technical person and you don't mind reading the forums, and you don't mind wasting, let's put it frankly, hours trying to get things to work, then you should have a look at it. If, you, if you've got the spare cash, if you want to investigate what you can do uh, with a board like this, then I recommend you go and do it. However, if you're the kind of person that just wants to get into, you know, you, doing maker stuff, you know, LEDs and switches and buttons and sensors and, and IoT and robotics and all that stuff, and you just want it to work and you want lots of examples that are already out there, you want lots of projects that show you how to do it, you want to just plug it in, you know it's going to work, you don't want to fight the hardware, fight the software, you're more interested in doing your project and getting that to work, then don't use this thing. Go with the Raspberry Pi, go with the Raspberry Pi Pico if you want a microcontroller, okay, don't touch this. Maybe we'll revisit this in a year's time, maybe it will be a different story, but don't waste your time on this. So it really does depend on what is your goal, what is it that you want to achieve. Okay, that's it, my name's Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains, I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you about your thoughts on the Vision 5 uh, 2. Please tell me in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.